Hey, welcome back. Today I'm going to show you how to install the Google tag. It doesn't matter if you're using Google Search, Google Ads, or Google Analytics, you're going to need the tag installed in your website. And I'm going to show you five different ways of how to do that. Two of which I strongly don't recommend you do, but they're popular, so I'm going to show you those things anyway. So without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so the first thing we're going to need before we actually start installing anything into our website is the Google tag itself. So I'm going to do this from Google Analytics. You can use this from Google Search. They all should automate this whole process. So here at Google Search, I'm going to say Google Analytics. I'm going to say search for that. And then the first result is obviously going to be Google Analytics. I'm going to load into that and it should welcome me with this screen. And we're going to start the wizard to get that Google Analytics tag. So I'm going to say start measuring. I'm going to give my account a name. I'm just going to be using the name example website. You should actually use the name of the business. That will help you remember that this is for that business because later down in the steps, you're going to have to say this is for the website. And if you have an app, then you can actually track the app analytics as well. The account name, just maybe rather just use the business name. The next thing we're going to do is going to see what options that we're going to be doing data sharing to Google with. I normally just uncheck this all, but do go through them and then just select the ones that you'd like to have information about. Then I'm gonna hit next. Here, as a property name, I'm gonna call this my website. Why I'm calling it that's because that's what I'm gonna be tracking. I'm gonna be tracking the website, so I'm just giving it the name of my website so that I know this for future reference. Then I'm gonna say what country I'm from and then what currency I use. Once I have those options filled, then I can click next. Then you can just give a little bit of details about your business. Here, I'm just gonna click small and I just wanna measure the customer engagement and lead generation. And then I'm gonna click create. Then go through the terms of service that they're gonna give you and then you can agree or disagree. If you disagree, then obviously you can't carry on. So I'm just gonna say accept. Here it gives more offers from Google. I'm just going to click save and I'm not going to check any other stuff. So here in the data streams screen, we're going to select what platform that we want to track. And this is going to be the web. So here in this pop up, we're going to give the URL and we're going to give the stream name. So for my URL, I'm just using my example website. So obviously it's got a lot of slashes in it because it's not my actual main website. So just remember that you must put in your own domain there. And as a tip, don't have the last backslash in your URL. So what I mean by that is sometimes when you copy paste the URL, then there's going to be a backslash right at the end. So say your website is example.com. Sometimes when you copy that address, it's example.com slash. So just make sure that that last slash, if you copy the URL, isn't there. Otherwise, Google is going to throw an exception and then you're not going to understand why. Then for the stream name, I'm going to say this is my website again. And then I'm going to say create stream. So here we have the stream ID and the actual tag number itself. Now this isn't the complete tag, it's just the tag number. So of the five ways that I'm going to be showing you how to put this into your website, some just need the tag numbers, others don't even need this information because they just use your whole analytics account. And then the ones that I prefer, you're going to need the Google tag, which is the entire script. So in this screen, if you haven't automatically had a pop-up that shows all the different options of installing your tag, then what you're going to do is go to configure tag settings here under Google tag. It's going to give you this new window and under this Google tag section, you can just say installation instructions and it'll come up to that exact same screen. Now, because this is a WordPress website, we have the options of using the SiteKit plugin or the Monster Insights plugin. Both of these I'm going to show you. Both of these I highly recommend not to use. Not to use. Why I say that is because it actually does a performance hit on your website. Now, if you're using a very, very powerful server, great, go ahead with that. And it's not going to really impact your server too much. But if you're using shared hosting, then I really do suggest not to use these and rather take the tag itself and just put it in to your website directly without using these. So I am going to show you how to use these and how to install these. But again, I don't recommend that you do. Okay, so for now, we're not going to do anything more on the screen. We are going to head over to the back end of our WordPress website and we're going to take things from there. So here in the back end of our website, the first example that I'm going to show you is SiteKit. Now, if you're interested in using SiteKit, then all you do is you go to plugins and you're going to say add new. In the screen, we're going to go to search plugins and we're just going to type out SiteKit. So the one that we're using is SiteKit by Google. Okay, so just make sure it's by Google. Now we're going to install this now. Once it's installed, then we're going to activate it. Okay, so now that SiteKit's been activated, what we're going to do is we're going to start the setup. 
We're going to click Start Setup, and we're going to go through this wizard. We're going to say Connect to Google Analytics. Then we're going to say Sign in with Google. You select your Google account that you want to use. So here we're going to select it all because we want the Google Analytics. We want the Google Search Console, and we want to see the list of domains that we control. Then we go down to the bottom and we say continue. Now we just have to verify ownership. Now we're going to turn on the matrix in the dashboard. Then you can actually see the stuff on your dashboard. So now it's asking me for search console. We'll just say set it up. And then Google Analytics as well. Now it has all that information. Now it's connecting to all those different services. And it's importing all that data into your website. Now we just say configure analytics quickly. And then we give more permissions. Always have to give more permissions. We say continue. And there you go. So now that Google Site Kit has been installed and configured, then it'll start gathering all the information that you need for your website. I don't recommend using Site Kit because what I've seen is that it takes a lot of resources away from your server. Now, if you're using a pretty powerful server, then you don't have to worry about it. But if you're using shared hosting, then I wouldn't really recommend using SiteKit for your website. Especially if your site is on shared hosting and it has a lot of pages or products. You need all that precious resources from the server to be dedicated to the website performance itself and not for the tracking codes underneath it. Because at the end of the day, it's all about the user experience. You would be far better suited using one of the other methods and then track all this information of the analytics from the Google Search Console or Google Analytics directly. One of the options you can use is Monster Insights. So Monster Insights and SiteKit are the two more popular options of using plugins to track all the analytics of your website. Now, I don't recommend either of them, like I've said before, but I'm going to show you how it's done anyways. So the first thing you're going to do in the back end of your website is you're going to go into Plugin and Add New. Now here in the Add Plugins page, we're going to go into Search Plugins and I'm just going to type in there Monster. And you can see that the very first plugin that, that popped up is Monster Insights. So now what we're going to do is install and activate this. Once it's activated, there's a whole wizard that you can just use to install this. Now this is the free version. They do have a pro version, but we're just going to be using the free version of Monster Insights. We're going to click on launch the wizard. Now we're going to give some information about our website. So I'm going to say this is a business website. I'm going to say connect Monster Insights to Google. I'm selecting my account. I'm going to give it permissions. Now I'm going to select the correct property. If it's not there, then you can actually just select on the drop down and then you can click the right one and then you say connection complete and then it finalizes all the things that it needs to do to set up the connection of analytics to your website and that includes installing the tag automatically for you now this connects to the google analytics it's going to give you all these recommended settings if you want to have affiliate link tracking and all that you can set that up here as well um, I'm just going to leave this all as is and I'm going to say save and continue. On the next screen, I'm going to leave this all pretty much standard as well. If this was an e-commerce website, then what I'd do is I'd go down to e-commerce tracking and I'd enable that as well. And then I'd say continue. Okay, so now that it's done everything, now we can just exit the setup. can go right down to the bottom and then go complete setup without upgrading. Now we don't need to upgrade to Monster Pro. What it has there is more than good enough. And there we go, it's done. So from the back end of your website, if you go into insights and reports, you can see everything that you need to see about your website. All the tracking is being done and it's all connected to the Google Analytics. Now again, same as SiteKit, this is going to take away resources from your server. So if you have a very powerful server, then that should be okay that you can actually have some resources dedicated to this. But if you're on something like shared hosting, this is not recommended. This is going to eat away at the performance of your website. That's why I don't recommend using Monster Insights or SiteKit. Okay, so now that I've shown you how to connect Google Analytics to your website using the plugins, now we're going to use my more preferred methods. Every tool you need for analytics of your website is already inside the Google consoles. So we don't need all those tools in our website because this takes away hardware resources that we need for the customer experience. So now I'm going to show you my favorite method of how to add a tag into your website. So what we're going to do is going to add in our own PHP snippet. So now if you don't have a custom plugin that you put in all your custom code, then you can just put into your themes function file. I'm going to show you how to do that now. So here in the back end of our website, we are going to go to appearance and say theme file editor. Now if you're doing it in your own custom plugin, then what you do is you'd go into plugins and plugin file editor and you'd get into the editor screen for plugins. So here inside the theme editor, I'm going to look for the theme functions file and I'm going to select that. And it's going to load up the theme functions file. Now you don't have to worry about editing anything in here. All we're going to do is add in our code at the bottom for our Google tag. So we scroll down all the way to the bottom 
Now here on this very last line, I'm just going to make a little bit of space. Just press enter. It doesn't matter how much space because space is ignored in code. And I'm going to put in some code here. So the code that I'm using is function and I'm going to give a function name and the function name is my Google code tag. I'm making my function name unique so it doesn't do a conflict with anything else inside the website. And then I'm going to say open and close brackets and then I'm going to do the open brace and then what happens is it's going to be a question mark and a greater than sign. So what's happening here is I'm saying the function name and then I'm stopping PHP. I'm doing that on purpose so that I can install the code directly and raw and then I can carry on doing PHP afterwards. And that's what's happening here in the space. So after the space over here, you can see the less than sign with a question mark saying now we're going to continue using PHP and we're going to say close brackets. And then to trigger our function, we're going to say add action open bracket and we're going to say WP underscore head and that's going to be the trigger that every time the head of the website is loaded our Google tag is going to be loaded as well. Then I say comma and then I reference the function that I'm going to be using and then I'm going to say comma 10 for priority. I'm going to say close bracket and then end off the line. Now don't worry about this code so much. I'm going to copy and paste this piece of code into the description of this video and you can copy paste this into your theme functions file and you can just install the tag in the open space in between the function name and the PHP and this will work on your website flawlessly. So now that we have this function, we're going to head over to that Google Analytics page that we had open earlier. If you don't know what I'm talking about, just go back to that chapter where I was talking about Google Tags. Then you can go carry on from that screen that we left off in that chapter. So here's this Google Tag screen that we left open and we're going to say install manually. And here is this code that we are going to copy paste into our function that we created inside our website. So in order to copy this, you can click on this copy sign over here or you can just highlight everything and say copy. Okay, so now that we've copied that code, we're going to head over back into our website and in between the function name and this PHP line over here, we are going to paste the code that we copied from Google. So now we have the Google tag inside our website code and all we have to do is say update file. So from here on out, every time the website is loaded, this tag will automatically be put into the header code of the website. Now again, I'm going to have this code in the description of this video. So you can just copy paste this into your theme functions file. So you don't have to worry exactly on the format because I'll have it there for you. Okay, so now that you've seen how I prefer doing it in code and you don't want to use code, there is an alternative for you, a very easy one, if you are already using Elementor Pro. What's great about using Elementor Pro over anything like SiteKit or Monster Insights is you don't have to use extra resources for extra plugins because you are already using Elementor Pro. So I'm going to show you how to do that here now. So in the back end of your website, you're going to hover over Elementor and you're going to go into custom code. Now here you can add the code for your Google Tags, your Facebook Pixels, everything. That's where you can do it all in one screen. Now the first thing you're going to do before carrying on with this is we need to have the Google Tag. Now remember that window we left open of Google Analytics in the previous chapter? Now we're going to go back to that now. If you don't know what I'm talking about, just go back to the previous chapter where we actually set up the Google Analytics and then you can come back to the same window here. So now in this installation instructions window, we are going to go install manually and it's going to give us the Google tag code. So now we're going to copy this code. So you have two options of copying it. You can select the copy sign and that'll copy the code or you can highlight all the code and just say copy. Then we're going to go back into our website to the Elementor screen. So now here we're going to say add new custom code. So now we're going to give this code a name and I'm going to say this is the Google tag. And then I'm just going to paste what we copied from the Google page here. And we're going to make sure that the location is the head. Once we have that, then all we have to do is say publish. And we're going to say that this is for the entire site. Now you can have the option of excluding certain pages if you want. But for the most part, a Google tag, we want it for the entire site. And we say save and close. And that's that. It's done. Your Google tag is now working in your website. And for whatever reason, if you need to come back to edit this, all you have to do is go to Elementor, go to custom code. And then you can see that here is the Google tag that we made and we can edit it or delete it if you need to. 
Okay, so now I've shown you how to use two different analytics plugins that I don't recommend you to, but I've shown you because they are popular. I've shown you how to use code directly, and I've showed you how to use Elementor Pro if you already have it on your website. The final way I'm going to show you is just in case you're not confident in actually inserting it in code, or you just don't use Elementor Pro. Now this last technique is free as well, so you don't have to worry about that, and it's just as simple as using Elementor Pro. So what you have to do is install a plugin that can allow us to put the code directly in the header. In order to do that, we're going to head over to plugins, and we're going to say add new. And the search term that I'm searching for is header and footer. Okay, so the plugin that we're looking for is from WP Code, and it is called Insert Headers and Footers. We're going to say install that, and we're going to activate it. Okay, so now that the plugin has been activated, we're going to go into Code Snippets, and we're going to say header and footer. Now, there are other snippets that you can use that they have pre-built, but all we're going to be targeting is the header and footer section. So now in this window, what we're going to do is we're going to install the Google tag manually and then just say save changes. Now in order to get the tag, we have to go back into the Google Analytics window that we set up earlier in this video. If you don't have that window open, then I would suggest go back into that chapter quickly just to get to this point Then you can continue on in this video. So here in this window, we're going to go install manually and we're going to take this tag over here and we're going to copy it over into our website. Now you can use this icon over here to copy the code or you can select the code manually yourself and just say copy. And we're going to go back into our website into this header section and we're going to say paste. So now we've pasted the Google tag. All you have to do is save changes and you're done. From here on out, the Google tag is going to be installed into the header of your website. It's easy as that and it's free. Okay, so I was showing you five different ways of installing the Google tag into your website. So you have tons of options to use whatever you prefer on putting that tag into your website. Now, it doesn't matter if it's for the search console or for the Google Analytics or Google Ads or anything Google related. If it's using the tag, any one of these options will be perfect for you. And the same methods can be used for Facebook Pixel. The one where I showed you how to install it through code, the one that uses Elementor Pro and using the plugin called Insert Headers and Footers, those three, you can do the same methods to install your Facebook Pixel. If you're using the Google Tag and Facebook Pixel, all you have to do is put the code underneath each other and it'll work fine for both tracking systems. I hope you found this video very helpful. If you have any questions, please send a comment down below. Believe me, I will get back to you. And with that, I will see you in the next one. Cheers.